So yesterday we were discussing about the sex chromosomes. Now you know sex chromosomes they exhibit two different conditions in living organisms, animals, male heterogamy and female heterogamy. So we were discussing yesterday male heterogamy. In male heterogamy, in male heterogamy, there are two conditions. X, 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 Y condition and another condition X, 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 zero condition. So yesterday we discussed about X, 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 Y condition. I told you yesterday that X, this X, 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 Y condition, it exists in all mammals and most of the insects including Drosophila. So for that purpose, so for that purpose, it is known as insect type sex chromosomes. In this condition, the female is Assalamualaikum. Salam. The female is homomorphic for the sex chromosomes. Male is heteromorphic for the sex chromosomes. Female is homogametic. Male is heterogametic. Right? We discussed it yesterday. Now there is another condition in male heterogamy that is known as XXXO condition. In which organisms we find this XXXO condition? This is found in some insects. Some insects like grasshopper. grasshopper. It is found in cockroaches. Yes, sir. It is found in silverfish. Silverfish. It is found in dragonflies. And it's also found in some nematodes, some round worms. Some round worms. Okay. Right? So in this condition, we again here see the female having the sex chromosomes XX. It is homomorphic for sex chromosomes. Homomorphic. And the female is homogametic. Homogametic. That means the two sex chromosomes of the female they are similar in shape and size. That is homomorphic. And when meiosis occurs, female produces ova, and each of the ova has got the sex chromosome X. So all the ova are alike in their genetic makeup, right? So that is this condition is known as homogametic. So in XXXO condition, female is homomorphic and homogametic for sex chromosome. What about the male in this condition? In this condition, the male has got XO sex chromosome. So male is definitely heterogametic. Heterogametic. When meiosis will occur, male will produce two types of sperm. In one sperm, there will be sex chromosome X. And in another sperm, there will be no sex chromosome, right? So two types of spermos will be produced by male. One sperm having sex chromosome X and another sperm without sex chromosome. So male is heterogametic. Male is heterogametic. We cannot say the male is exactly heteromorphic for sex chromosome because only one sex chromosome is present. Another is missing, right? So male yes, is only heterogametic. Male produces two types of gametes. One gamete with sex chromosome X and another with, without sex chromosome. So male is heterogametic. Since only one sex chromosome is present, so we cannot say male is heteromorphic, right? Heteromorphic condition would apply when two sex chromosomes are present. Since there is only one sex chromosome. So we cannot say male is heteromorphic, right? So that is the condition in this XXX zero condition right so this type of sex chromosome xxx0 it is found in some insects like grasshopper cockroach silverfish dragonflies and some round worms here xx condition it is female and x0 condition is male so female is heteromorphic sorry female is homomorphic and homogametic while as male is heterogametic male is heterogametic for the sex chromosome so that is all about male heterogamy now there is another condition which is known as female heterogamy.
there is another condition this is known as female heteroga female heteroga here the females are heterogamic right in this female heterogamy there are two condition one is known as zw zz condition and another condition is known as z0 zz condition right zw yes sir this is a female zz it is a male z0 is a female and zz is a male so in both the cases male are homomorphic and homogamic for their sex chromosome and it is the female which is different right so where would we find this condition of chromosome this w is w zz condition it is found in most of the vertebrates most of vertebrates like fishes birds reptiles birds and birds right and some butterflies and moths and some butterflies and moths it is also found in some butterflies and moths so zw zz condition which is a type of female heterogamy it is found in most of the vertebrates fishes reptiles birds butterflies and some moths right what about amphibians amphibians are also vertebrates what about amphibians which condition do they show amphibians they show both zw zz condition and they also show xx xy condition in some of the amphibians in some of the amphibians in some of the amphibians there is xx xy condition so this is known as male heterogamy some of the amphibians show male heterogamy and some of the amphibians they show this condition z w z z condition so some of the amphibians show female heterogamy right so in amphibians we find both male heterogamy as well as in female heterogamy but in fishes reptiles and birds and some butterflies and moths we find this female heterogamy on right okay now what about the sex chromosomes in the female here so in this case females are heteromorphic heteromorphic and heterogamic females are heteromorphic and heterogamic so when meiosis will occur this female it will produce one ovum with sex chromosome z and it will produce another ovum with sex chromosome w so two types of gametes will be formed so that condition is known as heterogamy when we compare the sex chromosome one is z another is w it is actually x and y right so they are different yes, in their morphology that condition is known as heteromorphic what about the males in this condition so males are homomorphic homomorphic and homogamic and homo gametic or sex chromosome right so when meiosis will occur male will form sperm and all these sperms will have z as their sex chromosome right so only yes. one type of sperm with z chromosomes will be formed so that condition will be known as homogamic condition and because the sex chromosomes are similar in shape and size that condition is known as homomorphic right so this zw zz type of sex chromosome we find mostly it in fishes reptiles birds and some butterflies and moths right so in this condition females are yes, heteromorphic and heterogametic males are homomorphic and homogametic right then it is another condition z zero zz condition where we find that condition in female heterogamy there is another condition z zero zz condition in which organisms this condition is found this is also found in some in some butterflies some butterflies 
and moths. In some butterflies and moths, the female, this is the female, this is the male. The female is heterogametic. Female is heterogametic. The female will produce two types of ova: one with zard sex chromosome, another without sex chromosome. And male will be male is always homomorphic and homogametic. So male will produce sperms. Each sperm will be having z sex chromosome, right? So this condition, when the sperms are alike, that condition is known as homogametic. Because they have got similar type of sex chromosome in them, that condition is known as homomorphic. So these are the two, these were the two different conditions of sex chromosomes, male heterogamy and female heterogamy. Now, after this, we are going to discuss about the basis of sex determination. Genetic basis of sex determination in human, birds, and honeybee. Now, after this, we are going to discuss about genetic basis of sex determination. Genetic basis of sex determination. Risk of sex determination. Determination. In humans, humans. birds, and honeybees. Bird. In your syllabus, only these three are mentioned. Genetic basis of sex determination in humans, birds, and honeybee. Sex determination is of various types. One type of sex determination where the sex is determined by chromosomes. That is known as genetic basis of sex determination. There is another method of sex determination where sex is determined by some environmental factors like temperature, like pH, right? Or some other chemicals. That is known as environmental sex determination. If we go according to your syllabus, then you are only supposed to discuss genetic basis of sex de determination, right? So sex determination may be genetic, genetic sex determination, or it may be environmental sex determination. According to your syllabus, you are only supposed to discuss genetic sex determination, right? And in genetic sex determination, you have to discuss only sex determination in humans, birds, and honeybees, right? Genetic sex determination may be of two types: allosomic, allosomic sex determination, and another is that is known as autosomal sex determination. Autosomal sex determination. Genetic sex determination is of two types. Allosomic sex determination and autosomal sex determination. What is allosomic sex determination? Where the sex is determined by sex chromosomes. I told you yesterday, sex chromosomes are also known as allosomes or heterosomes. Sex chromosomes are also known as allosomes or heterosomes. So allosomic sex determination is a type of sex determination where sex is determined by sex chromosomes, right? And autosomal sex determination is a type of sex determination where sex is determined by autosome. It is found in some insects like Drosophila. You might have heard about Drosophila. In Drosophila, there is autosomal sex determination. However, we are only concerned here with allosomal sex determination in humans, birds, and honey. Right? We are not also concerned with environmental sex determination. Right? So let us see first yes, allosomic sex determination. Let us see first allosomic sex determination in humans, birds, and honeybee. Have you got syllabus? Syllabus have kept us. Yes, sir. If you check it on syllabus, you are only there. There is only you have to discuss with the Sex determination in humans, birds, and honeybee. What, which type of, what condition of sex chromosomes is present in human beings? X, X, Y. 
एक्स 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 वाई कंडीशन दिस इज नोन एज मेल हेट्रोगेन इन ह्यूमन बींग्स देयर इज मेल हेट्रोगेन राइट सो दिस फीमेल एक्स एक्स द फीमेल इज प्रोड्यूस एन ओवा ओम विच ऑलवेज हैज सेक्स क्रोमोजोम एक्स हाउ एवर मेल इज प्रोड्यूस स्पर्म्स विच मे हैव सेक्स क्रोमोजोम एक्स और सेक्स क्रोमोजोम वाई इन देम राइट Yes, sir. This ovum fuses with this gynosperm. I told you yesterday, this sperm with sex chromosome X is known as gynosperm. If this if this ovum fuses with this gynosperm, what will be the result resultant offspring? The resultant will be X X. So this offspring will be a female. This offspring will be a female. Now, if this ovum joins with this sex chromosome, sorry, with this sperm, endosperm. If ovum fuses with this endosperm, what will be the resulting offspring? It will be X Y. It will be a male. It will be a male. So what makes this zygote? What makes this zygote to develop into a male? What makes this zygote to develop into a male? So in this zygote, we have got a sex chromosome Y. Y. You know this sex chromosome Y. It has got just Over two hundred genes in it. On sex chromosome Y, there are just some two hundred genes on it. On sex chromosome X, there are some more than some two thousand genes. On sex chromosome X, there are some two thousand genes or more on it. On sex chromosome Y, there is there are just some two hundred genes. and these genes they are mostly concerned with male characteristic features they are mostly con concerned with male characteristic features among these 200 genes there is a gene known as sry gene among these 200 genes there is a gene known as sry gene this sry stands for sex determining region sex determining region there is a gene for known as sex determining region and this sry gene it codes for a polypeptide it codes for a polypeptide it codes for a protein that protein is known as tdf that is known as tdf testes determining factor testes determining factor and it is this testes determining factor which stimulates the embryo to become a male it stimulates embryo to change into a male to change into a male it stimulates the formation of testes in the embryo when testes are formed then embryo changes into a male if this tdf is not present if this testes determining factor is not pre present then the embryo will automatically develop into a female right so now which what determines sex in human beings now which chromosome determines sex in humo, human beings it is y chromosome which determines sex in human beings right so an embryo which has received y chromosome that y chromosome contains a gene sry gene when this sry gene is expressed it codes for a polypeptide or it codes for a protein that protein is known as tdf testes determining factor and this testes determining factor this protein it stimulates the formation of testes in the embryo and when the testes are formed that embryo changes into a male right in its absence the embryo will automatically develop into a female so it is the y chromosome in human beings which leads to the formation of male if the y chromosome is absent then the embryo will automatically develop into a female right so this sex is determined in human beings by y chromosome so sex is determined in human beings by y chromosome because it contains gene sry 
that codes for TDF and TDF stimulates the formation of testes in the embryo that develops into a male, right? So that is sexual determination in human beings, right? Now we will have a look at the sexual determination in birds. We will have a look at the sexual determination in birds. Which type of sex chromosomes are present in birds? What is the condition of sex chromosomes in birds? ZW? ZW, ZZ. Right? So here females, they are the heterogametic and males are the homogametic. Right? So when female will form ova, the female will form two types of ova. One with sex chromosome Z, another with sex chromosome W. When male will form sperm, it will form only one type of sperm with sex chromosome Z. Now, if this Z fuses with this sperm, if this ovum fuses with this sperm, what will be the resulting of Z Z? If this fuses with this sperm, what will be the <coughs> This condition is male. ZZ condition is male and ZW condition is female. So what makes this zygote to develop into a female? What is contained in W? What is contained in this? It is not W. It is actually Z chromosome. There is something on Z chromosome which makes it to develop into a female, right? Have you heard about it? There is a gene, there is a gene known as DMRT1. This DMRT1 gene, it is present on Z chromosome. It is present on Z chromosome. What is the full form of this DMRT1? DMRT1 stands for double sex, double sex and MAB3 related transcription factor, transcription factor 1. The full form of DMRT1. Full form of DMRT1 is double sex and MAB3 related transcription factor 1. So it is basically a gene. Where this gene is located? It is located on Z chromosome, right? This gene, it shows a dosage effect. This gene shows a dosage effect. This gene shows a dosage effect. What is dosage? When, <coughs> sorry, when this gene is present in double dose, when the gene is present in double dose, when there are two copies of the gene, when the gene is present in double dose, when there are two copies of the gene, ZZ condition, this develops into a male, this develops into a, the offspring develops into a male. When the gene is in single dose, when the gene is in single dose, that is Z and W condition. Gene is present only on Z chromosome. It is absent on W chromosome. So there is only one copy of the gene. So we say gene is in single dose, right? Then it produces a female. So this effect is known as dosage effect. This effect is known as dosage effect. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So in birds, yes, the sex is determined by a chromosome, sorry, by a gene known as DMRT1 gene. In birds, sex is determined by a gene known as DMRT1 gene. This DMRT1 gene, it is present on Z chromosome. It is present on Z chromosome. Yes. Then this gene, it shows dosage effect. This gene shows dosage effect. If the gene is present in double dose, that means there are two copies of the gene present in the embryo. Yes. Then it will develop into a male. It will develop into a male. If the gene is in single dose, that means there is only single copy of the gene in ZW condition. 
Zed chromosome bears the gene, W chromosome lacks this gene. Then it develops into a female. So in birds, sex is determined by this DMRT1 gene, which is present on Z chromosome. And this DMRT1 gene, it shows dosage effect. When it is in double dose, it produces a male. When it is present in single dose, it produces a female. So that is sex determination in birds, right? That is sex determination in birds. So in humans, it was SRY gene, which was responsible for sex determination. That was located on Y chromosome. In birds, it is DMRT1 gene, which is responsible for sex determination. It is located on Z chromosome. But this gene shows dosage effect, as I told you in this example, right? Now, after birds, we will discuss sex determination in honeybee. There is a type of sex determination that is known as haplo diploid. diploid. Type of sex determination. Type of sex determination. In honeybees, there is a type of sex determination that is known as haplo diploid type of sex determination. You know, in honeybees, there are three castes. Queen, worker, worker and drones. And drones. Which of them is a fertile female? In honeybees, there are three castes. Queen, worker and drones. Which of them is a fertile female? Who lays the eggs? Queen. Queen is a fertile female. Queen is a fertile female. Worker is a citrine. Worker is a female, but it is citrile. The worker does not lay eggs. And drones, they are haploid males. They are haploid males. Yes. So all the egg laying in honeybee colony is done by queen. So queen lays eggs. Yes, sir. The job of egg laying has, is assigned to queen. So queen lays eggs. But queen lays two types of eggs. Queen lays two types of eggs. Fertilized eggs. Unfertilized. And unfertilized eggs. Queen lays two types of eggs, fertilized eggs and unfertilized eggs. When fertilized eggs hatch, when fertilized eggs hatch, they develop into larvae. When unfertilized eggs hatch, they also develop into larvae, right? Yes. Now, depending upon the food given to these larvae, which are which have hatched from fertilized eggs, they may develop into queen or they may develop into worker, workers, yes. right? If this larva is given royal jelly, if the royal, if the larva is fed on royal jelly, then the larva will develop into a queen. This royal jelly, it is a nutritious food. It is having most of honey in it and very little pollen. So it is a nutritious food. When this larva is fed this nutritious food, royal jelly, it develops into a queen. If the larvae are fed bee bread, if they are fed on bee bread, they develop into workers, into citrile females. This bee bread, it is rich in pollen, but it has very little honey in it, right? It has very little honey in it. So these larvae develop into workers. What about these larvae, which have developed from unfertilized eggs? These larvae, they always develop into haploid males. They always develop into haploid males. Yes. So some of the larvae, they develop into these two larvae, these two types of larvae, they develop into females. Queen is a female, worker is a female. Queen is a female, worker is a female. So if we see here fertilized eggs, they always develop into females. 
unfertilized eggs they always develop into males so what determines the sex here you can see fertilized eggs they develop either into queen or worker, but both are females. Whether they develop into a queen or a worker. Queen is female, worker is also female. Unfertilized eggs, they develop into haploid males. So they are males. Unfertilized eggs always develop into males. So what determines sex here? Here the sex is determined by fertilization or unfertilization, right? So if the egg is fertilized, if the egg is fertilized, it will develop into a female. Here, fertilized eggs develop into females. Female. Then it depends upon the food, whether it will uh, develop into a queen or a worker. Unfertilized eggs, they always develop into males. So here the sex is determined by the number of chromosome sex. Fertilized eggs, they are deployed. Fertilized eggs are deployed. And unfertilized eggs are always haploid. That is why we call it as haplo diploid type of sex determination. So haploid eggs they will always develop into haploid eggs will always develop into males and diploid eggs will always develop into females. So here the sex is determined by the number of chromosome sets, right? In this fertilized egg, there are two sets of chromosomes. It is diploid. So when there is a diploid set of chromosomes. It develops into a female. If there is haploid set of chromosome, then it develops into a male. So in honeybee, sex is determined by the number of chromosome sets. So if the egg is deployed, it will develop into. If the zygote is deployed, then it will develop into a female. If the zygote is haploid, if the egg is haploid, it will always develop into a male. So this type of sex determination is known as haplo diploid type of sex determination because haploid eggs they always develop into males. And deployed eggs always develop into females, right? So that is all about yes, sex determination in humans, birds, and honey, right? So that is session for today. Thank you for being with me. Thank you, sir. Okay, welcome.